All right, we have with us Texas head coach Karen Aston. Coach, if you would start with an opening statement, then we'll go to questions. Uh, good morning. Uh, woke up this morning really excited about uh, Texas being in the Sweet 16. Uh, it, players are excited. Our, our program is excited, and um, it's a huge challenge that we have ahead of us. But our team is, and our program is in such a good place right now, and um, it, it's that type of feeling that you, you want to have at Texas. And um, our players are excited, our coaches are excited, and um, again, it's a huge challenge for us, but we're looking forward to it. Reminder to identify yourself with your name and affiliation before you ask a question for Coach. Questions? Hey, Coach, Doug Feinberg, the Associated Press. Hi, Doug. This has sort of been a weird season for you guys. I mean, it started out really great, went through some injuries, and then now back in the Sweet 16 for the first time in 11 years. Just talk about the, the ride that this team's been on for the season? Uh, it, it's been an interesting one, needless to say. Um, I, I feel like the team has been reinvented two or three times. Uh, it's the best way I know to describe the season is that we started off with, with a team that didn't have all of its parts because Imani and Nakia were out early in the year. And then we felt like we were getting all of our parts back. And then we had a couple of other kids get injured uh, along the way, Ariel and Bree. And then, of course, the, the major loss was Neka and Polly, uh, who was having a phenomenal senior season. And that was just such a blow to us from, a, from an emotional standpoint that it took, it took a little bit of time. Uh, and the reinvention really was just everybody accepting some different roles, um, accepting a little more responsibility for leadership, which was a challenge because Neka was was the leader of our basketball team. So I think it became a challenge to get us to take a collective effort. But towards the end of conference season, I, th I thought that we started to reinvent ourselves in a positive way. And um, we're, we're playing good basketball right now. I'm pleased with how we're playing. Questions? On the left, our left, second row. Uh, Pete Doherty, Albany Times Union. Karen, the Genos in here earlier talked about he, he thought you guys would probably be good either this year or next year, just the way your recruiting uh, has, has, has been recently. How did you feel? Do you feel you get to this point this year, or is, is this maybe a, a bit of a surprise that uh, you got this far? Well, I think it's a surprise to most people because of the stretch of time that we had that we weren't playing good basketball. So I think to see us in the Sweet 16 right now is a surprise to most, but if I look at the players that we have, I mean, even the loss of NECA and Nakia, you still look at a talented basketball team that if they can put the pieces together, you had a shot. So I never want to say that I didn't think this team would be here. I, I think when we started the season and we saw what we had and what we could put together, I think we absolutely thought we would make it to this point. Um, but then the doubts happened a little bit along the way. Um, I'm just so proud of the team for regrouping and getting really to the point that they could achieve some goals that they set out to do. But I do feel like we are at a place where we should be at this level. Up front to our left, your right. Roger Cleveland from the Waterbury Republican American. Coach, what, what did happen? What did you guys do other than Amani getting <laughs> healthy and, and stepping up? What else happened to bring you guys together? Well, health is a big part of it. I mean, it's a player's game. And Amani Stafford is an incredibly talented player that it took some time for her to get her timing back and her conditioning. So her playing at a higher level is a huge piece, especially when with the loss of NECA, because we lost an inside player. Uh, the other thing was we had some other players that needed to get their confidence back from their injuries, which was Ariel and Bree Taylor. So I think the pieces sort of started being put back together when we had a collective group of people that stayed healthy for a period of time where everybody could say, OK, this is what my role is. I know what coach expects me to do. I know what my teammates expect from me. So I think as they could establish their own identity and their own role again, then they became more confident, which we all know that's what it's all about, really, is confidence. Front row to the right. Oh, gosh. Um, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of challenges. And I think everybody knows that, that sees them play uh, on a daily basis. I think what's a little more interesting as a coach is 
you watch them play and you, you know that they can really score a lot of points and you know they're good in transition and there's some obvious things as you watch them play as a fan. As a coach, when you're starting to scout them, they look a little different um, in a sense that I think you don't realize that their defense is really, really good. And I had the opportunity, ironically enough, to scout them, not them, but look at film on them against Stanford because we followed up their loss uh, in playing Stanford and their defense did not look like it does now. So I'm sure that got their attention. Um, I think it's probably the best thing about their team is that their length is so tremendous that it's very difficult to get off easy shots. Um, we all know they can score and they can score a lot of different ways, but I really think that their defense has improved so much throughout the year that scoring is really the problem. It's the challenge. Second row again, left side. Karen, I'm just wondering if you have any kind of history with uh, Gene on and, and, and what your impressions are of what he's done in this uh, 30 years there at uh, in stores. I don't have much of a history with him. I mean, when I was an assistant at Texas under Coach Conrad, we had some interesting recruiting battles, but that's probably the only connection or any, any interaction that I've probably ever had with him. Um, I'm a basketball fan. I'm a junkie, so it's hard not to pay attention to the icons in the game, uh, and I would consider him one of those. I worked for one, so I understand what that's all about. Um, I have an admiration for coaches that do what he's done. Um, it's it's fun to watch his teams play. Um, I, you know, they're always so fundamentally sound, and and they don't make a lot of mistakes, and that that's that's discipline. It's coaching. It's discipline. It's having players that buy into things. So um, a lot of admiration for what he's done throughout the years. Up front, Doug. Coach, two-part question. First off, they have the experience. They've been here 22 straight years of the Sweet 16. It's your team's first time, I think, in 11 years. I think you were an assistant or associate head coach last time Texas made it this far. Mm -hmm. So is that going to play a factor in this? And second off, you guys haven't played UConn in a while. So is there the awe factor at all their team, or is it better off they haven't seen them up close and personal as the team? Now, that's a great question. Um, I have a terrible memory of UConn <laughs> because uh, – it was in the Final Four, so I haven't even watched that tape. I think I burned it. Um, but it, it, that's a great question that I don't know that I can completely answer as to how our team will react to playing Connecticut. Uh, no, we haven't played them. I mean, but we play really good people in the Big 12. I think our schedule this year will help us somewhat um, because we've seen Tennessee. We've seen Stanford. We've seen Baylor three times. We've seen Oklahoma. Uh, we've seen we played on the road at UCLA and we just played at Cal So I, I think there are some things that we can reflect back on um, That I don't say they're exactly similar, but the environment and the pressure would be similar um, But it is their first sweet 16 so it's a you want I want them to have some experiences that will feed them and fuel them because we have a very young basketball team. I mean, with the loss of NECA, we have one senior that will finish out when this year is over. Um, we're playing a lot of young players that you want, I want them to have a, a really great experience with this. I want them to, whatever happens, um, whether it's positive, not positive, whatever it is, I, I want to fuel this program to higher standards and, and um, whatever that is, we'll, we'll take it. Um, I expect them to compete. I'll be really surprised if we don't show up and compete tomorrow. Questions? Roger. Coach, everybody talks about your size inside and how imposing that can be. What's your impression of UConn's front court? I mean, they aren't the biggest, but they're pretty talented. Um, they're long. I wouldn't say that they have maybe as much. Um, I guess when people talk about our size, Imani's gotten bigger and stronger throughout her career. Uh, Kelsey's gotten, Kelsey's a good sized girl. Um, so we ha we do have some size, but I think they're, they have length. Um, in the in the, the three, four, and five positions. So I, I think it presents a lot of problems, but um, I would like to think that 
we do have some situations offensively where we might could score some points down low and, and show them some things that maybe they haven't seen in a while. I know they saw it against South Carolina, but um, I don't know that they've seen some of the size that we have. Luke Cyphers from ESPNW. How important will it be to take away their outside game offensively, particularly uh, from behind the three-point line? I, I think it's extremely important um, to limit Lewis's three-point attempts. Um, you know, it's difficult to say that you could guard this team straight up uh, because they have weapons at every position. So I think as a coach, and I'm sure every coach experiences this when they play them, you try to figure out what it is that you're willing to gamble on. Um, so we'll look at some different, different options with that. But I do think that you have to limit their three-point baskets because they go on really big runs when they get out in transition and hit threes. Um, their energy level gets really high, and they, they go on runs that are really difficult to overcome. Any additional questions? Doug? Coach, I may be off my time a little bit, but you were talking about recruiting battles. Mariah Jefferson's a Texas kid. Were you there when, when eighth grader the past year time? Is, is it tough seeing kids from Texas who are pretty talented get away now that you're back in Texas and coaching there? It's very tough. It's very tough. I, I don't, I've said this all along, no disrespect to anyone, but if you're from the state of Texas, I don't understand why you leave Texas. I just don't. Any questions? Any more questions? No? Coach, thank, thank you. you.